Happy Monday everyone, this is Martha with Nature Niche and this week I want to talk to you about why goldenrods are great. I think they often get a bad rap um, and are in general underappreciated. So I heard a lot of confusion um, over the last several seasons of native plant sales that I've held at the store and, and uh, misinformation. So I wanted to share all the benefits that uh, things in the genus Solidago um, which is in the daisy or aster family, aster AC. All the benefits those plants have to offer. You often um, might hear that goldenrods are the cause of your fall allergies, uh, but this is usually not the case. Um, fall allergies aren't really triggered by goldenrod, but by ragweed in the genus Ambrosia that blooms within the same time frame. So um, that species, the, the ragweed, is wind pollinated um, and it does cause hay fever. Despite that, it also has a lot of ecological value um, to our birds, moths, bees, um, and other insects. But um, unless you are, have been tested and specifically um, allergic to goldenrod, usually your hay fever in the fall um, is related to ragweed, not goldenrod. Goldenrod pollen um, is pretty sticky and heavy, and it needs the insects to pollinate and move those grains of pollen around. Um, it doesn't float in the wind as easily as the ragweed does. Um, and as far as benefits go from a human perspective, uh, solidago in Latin means to make whole. And um, basically the properties of goldenrod um, really do a lot of things. It's similar to other herbs in that it is antifungal, it's diuretic, diaphoretic, um, anti-inflammatory, an expectorant, an astringent, antiseptic, and um, carminative. So uh, that's using the above ground portions of the plants and it offers impressive health benefits to the kidneys, urinary tract, um, skin, uh, cardiovascular system, and uh, it does make um, a nice antidote to uh, seasonal ragweed allergies. So you can actually use it to help with your fall allergies. Um, and it can be prepared as a tea, a tincture, um, infused oils, poultice, and as a powder. So um, it was once known as Blue Mountain Tea, and um, it can, it, uh, research has shown that it is higher in antioxidants than green tea is. Um, and it was also used as a political statement after the Boston Tea Party when the colonists shunned black tea and used a mix of goldenrod, betony, and red clover to make what they called a liberty tea. I'll provide some links with um, more of the details of the human health benefits um, things like healing wounds. Um, you can do your, your own research. I would consult with your doctor to avoid interactions with other medications or health conditions you may have. But I was surprised um, all of the, the human health benefits that goldenrods have to offer. You do wanna make sure you're identifying goldenrod plants correctly um, to avoid other yellow flowered members of the Asteraceae family that are toxic like ragwort or sometimes called um, ground cell. And that's in um, the, the genus, it used to be Senecio, some things got moved into the genus Pacara. So, and those close relatives. So make sure you know what you're collecting and using. Um, I also wanted to mention the wonderful aesthetic values of goldenrod. I mean, big, beautiful yellow swaths of color um, in your landscape. I think the architecture of the, the flowers and then the seed heads in the fall and winter um, and the fuzzy seed heads really add fall and winter interest to plantings. In Europe, goldenrod is highly prized as an ornamental. And here in the US, I think we just, we have um, many more um, species, a, a greater diversity across this genus and uh, we really shouldn't take it for granted. We should be proud of our, our goldenrod uh, natural heritage um, and celebrate those plants in our landscape. 
They're easy to grow. They're adaptable to a range of site conditions. And um, they do have a weedy reputation, but maybe we should prize that, that they can grow in tough site conditions in a lot of different places. And I think if we choose the right um, species for a particular site and particular planting goals, um, they can certainly be used um, in managed landscapes as well as natural ones. And historically, this plant was not just used for medicinal purposes, but also as a plant dye and um, a refreshing beverage. From an ecological perspective, um, goldenrod is an incredibly important late blooming perennial plant. Um, its nectar draws all kinds of pollinators um, and other beneficial insects, as well as the pollen. Uh, short and long-tongued bees, um, butterflies, flies, wasps, and beetles are all attracted to. We've got, uh, I think, some soldier beetles hanging out on this one today. And uh, the when you search for um, Midland zip code in the native plant finder, goldenrod comes out on top as far as the best um, herbaceous native plant to plant for um, Lepidoptera, so butterflies and moths, caterpillar host plant species. It supports 135 species, at least in the, in the area where I live. So again, if you have limited space and you want to provide butterfly and moth support, um, goldenrod is a great, a great choice to have in your um, pollinator planting. And it's really important for um, bumblebees, which are active later um, in the growing season, even into colder temperatures, to have a food source for them and for migrating monarchs coming through um, on their way down to the southern states and Mexico. The seeds, flower heads, and leaves of goldenrod are eaten by um, songbirds and upland game birds. Um, and it can be a food source for mammalian herbivores, things like groundhogs, rabbits, deer, um, and livestock, although it isn't a preferred um, forage source for them. So there are 22 species native to Michigan, and I have seven of them right now available at my native plant sale through um, Saturday, September 3rd. So if you're local, um, haven't been to the plant sale, or came and you were wondering, why do I have uh, goldenrod in each of my sales categories? That's why, just all the, the benefits that this plant provides. So I have um, blue stem, zigzag, old field, swamp, rydell's, stiff, and showy goldenrod um, for your planting pleasure. So I hope this helps shed some new light um, and a sense of appreciation for the diverse and immensely beneficial genus Solidago. I'll leave you with words from a famous naturalist, John Muir. The fragrance, color, and form of the whole spiritual expression of goldenrod are hopeful and strength-giving beyond any others I know. A single spike is sufficient to heal unbelief and melancholy. Take care and have a good week.